Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. Now I'm bringing on bite-sized pieces. So today it's all about a dumpster fire. And this was probably uh, the funniest and realist article I could come across. And I just had to talk about it because I, uh, I was laughing my A off the whole time when I was reading it. Charles Hoskinson blasts Ethereum as a dumpster fire, says Cardano will attract a billion users. And uh, before anybody gets out of hand and just starts saying, you know what, uh, how dare they and how this, just remember uh, tribalism gets us nowhere. So let's, uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, and also I wanna need to give an update on the DNews staking pool for Cardano, what is going on as far as uh, saturation and the uh, newest aspect, which we're going to actually be doing, uh, not giveaways, but uh, charities to a place called kiva.org. And finally, we'll take a look at what is going on with Bitcoin as long-term investors continue to hodl despite a 1 trillion Bitcoin market cap. So we'll take a look at all those things, but first let's take a look at what's going on in the market. And actually, uh, first of all, we should uh, address the elephant in the room, which is this microphone right here. So uh, some people complain about the audio and some people, most people don't, but some people do. So I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna get the best thing I could possibly get. And uh, I'll use this SM7B again and see what it is. And then we'll go from there. I had to tweak some settings. So we, we used this in the past and I didn't think it was that great. So we'll do some settings. Also, the reason why I'm holding it is because the arm snapped in half. So that's always awesome. So I just wanted to get this out of the way and see what happens. Maybe it sounds awesome. Maybe it sounds the exact same. Uh, I, don't, I can't really tell much of a difference, honestly, but uh, whatever. So let's see what's going on today. It is uh, March 23rd. It's almost 11 a.m. And uh, if you notice also, I haven't done a couple of videos the last two days uh, because I was just busy and I was super like beyond tired. Sometimes I just get the, you know, run down and there's all these different things we're doing with, I mean, going to Houston and the investment properties and then dealing with the uh, sports facility then doing with the uh, retailers and it just kind of got to me. So Sunday and Monday, just took a day, a couple days off. It was awesome. I feel refreshed. And yeah, here we are. Look at me. I'm like, uh, I look younger than 50. So I'm pretty happy today. All right, so uh, what's going on today? This is what we got for the market. So uh, Bitcoin is taking a little bit of a tumble. I think everybody knows this. Now we're down to 55.6. Ethereum 1700, and it just took a big a big dip. And uh, usually this happens on a Sunday. It's like every Sunday night it happens. But this one, uh, we've seen it actually prolong. And what's gonna happen, not too sure, but uh, our friends over at Market Rebellion were talking about a major dip, major correction, maybe a 50,000 uh, Bitcoin. And I actually posted something on that on Twitter. I said, hey, Bitcoin to 50K. And people lost their minds. First of all, you have to understand something. And that is that uh, I'm just guessing. And nobody really knows exactly where it's going. We can look at the technicals. We can look at the fundamentals. But nobody really, really, truly knows what's going to happen uh, with Bitcoin. Do I think it can go on 50K? Sure. Do I think it, it will happen? Yeah, possibly. But uh, I mean, who really knows? But I would just say this. Uh, if you are a dollar cost averager like me, it, it doesn't really matter which way it goes. And that's the greatest freedom part that you can have as far as like being an investor. Because, you know, if it goes to 50K, you're like, great, I get a, I get a sale. I, I get to really pick some uh, some cheap uh, Bitcoin and alts up as well. And if it goes up, you're like, great, my portfolio is up. So like, it really doesn't matter which way it actually goes. And I think the ones that are really stressed the F out are the ones that have actually dumped way too much money into this market. And they're like, it has to go up. It has to go up. It has to go up. My wife's going to kill me. Da, 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 da. So if that's you, uh, just be careful what you're doing, because uh, you know what? Uh, I will just say this. It never ends well. So just be careful what you invest in. All right. Anyhow, what else we got? Tether's Tether, nobody cares. Cardano's down a little bit, uh, but hey, that's uh, that solidly in that number five spot. I'll take that. Uh, we were at dollar sixteen. It was at dollar forty after that Coinbase listing. And just real quick, everybody talks about the Coinbase effect. There is no, I, I don't care how much you say Coinbase effect, whatever else. Usually it would like double, sometimes triple. Uh, remember when Filecoin was uh, was put on there? I mean, it went way up. I don't think it's as big of a deal anymore because there's so many on ramps now. If this is listed on PayPal, watch out. Anyhow, Polkadot's uh. Yeah, up a little bit. XRP. Congratulations, XRP holders. There has been some new breaking things in the um, in the lawsuit, and there potentially uh, could be a resolution. But uh, don't hold that to me. That was just um, that was just lawyer speak. And uh, between me and you, uh, I think it's going to go on a lot longer. And that's just how it is. Uniswap eight. But this is the big story: Theta token. And if you've been on this channel for any length of time, I've been talking about this for a very, very long time. Before it was in the top 100. 
Theta token is going to be uh, massive. And uh, not only did it have, it was it granted a second US patent just uh, last week, uh, but it was also launched online with, uh, you know, in the, uh, in, uh, over in the Southeast Asia, Asian countries. Line is like a huge uh, type of app as far as like payments and everything else goes. So Theta is launching with Line and uh, it is just going to explode. I see it could go up to $20, who knows? It's crypto, who knows? Anyhow, and that's like the big story. So. Uh, Terra also making a, is on a tear, was on a tear down 12%. <laughs> Take that back. Dogecoin, which everything's going to a dollar. Hint, it's not. And some other stuff. I don't really care. All right. So that's what's going on in the markets. It's kind of a bearish day, except for theta. But just remember, dollar cost averaging. Uh, and some people say, well, I just want to go all in. Cool. You can go all in. But these are the days that really suck when you go all in, especially when you go all in here instead of down here. There's a big difference. And that's why I always talk about, hey, just be careful. And that's all I got to say. All right. So let's take a look at uh, today's top story. So first up, Charles Hoskins. Man, this was funny. This was funny. Uh, Blast Ethereum is a dumpster fire, says Cardano will attract a billion users. Now, the billion users I can really see because uh, we there was a... Uh, not an interview, but a uh, a workshop or uh, a big uh, conference uh, for uh, the African Blockchain Conference, and it was it was taken on uh, last week. And Charles Hoskin was the keynote speaker. And the things that he talked about in there, I'm gonna I'll cover it tomorrow. But it really does make a lot of sense. And if people, I know people think, well, Africa is a very uh, poor country. Really, in, in actuality, it's not. It's just that they are they are underserved and they are woefully un unbanked. So I think this is gonna be a game changer, and we'll talk about it tomorrow. Anyhow, <laughs> my man Charles says, Ethereum's a dumpster fire in which a few groups of elites have been benefiting, Charles Hoskinson has claimed. The mathematician believes that Cardano is light years ahead of Ethereum with lower fees and faster transactions. Well, he's right about that. I mean, there's lower fees and faster transactions. He predicts that Cardano will be the first blockchain that hits 1 billion users. So before everybody gets all crazy and starts you know, going, how dare he talk about Ethereum? Hey, it is what it is. Like, uh, are you happy with the fees right now? Are you ecstatic with what's going on with uh, the decentralized exchanges and, and what's happening? Don't you think this could have been fixed a lot longer uh, ago with all these fees? Let me ask you this. How many of you right now watching this video could have had a lot more different cryptocurrencies if the decentralized exchanges would get away from Ethereum? I'm not balking on Ethereum. I think it's going to be great. They got to fix a lot of things. That's what Ethereum 2.0 is, is all about. But in this time, in the time that you could have invested a lot, I think a lot of people could have made a lot bigger gains. Now, there's some people out there like, what are you talking about? I just dumped 10,000 in and it wasn't even that big of a deal. Yeah, for you, 10,000 air, good for you. But uh, for other people who maybe not, not have that, maybe it's they want to spend you know, 50 to $100. There's a lot more of those people than there are of people who want to spend 10, 50, $100,000 on these decentralized exchanges. And that is just the truth. So when Charles is talking about, hey, these transaction fees are high, he's right. He's right. I tried to do it myself. It was a $50 transaction and <laughs> the gas fee was 54. So whatever. That's just how I see it. Now, can Ethereum catch up? Sure it can. It's just going to take a little bit of time. And, but here's the problem in cryptocurrency land. Uh, things are moving at a breakneck pace, right? So if they're talking about like, well, six months and EIP 1559 is right around the corner and you just have to wait for us. Um, I don't know. I don't know that's going to happen. Uh, but I own both, and uh, I'm a big cheerleader for both. But uh, if one wins, hey, whatever. Um, but just remember this: that there really is no no winner winners. I think there's room for both. But the big question is which one's going to be awesome, and which one is going to be super fantastic. I don't know which one it is. Anyhow, to continue on, Hoskinson spared no punches, calling out Ethereum community in its criticism of Cardano. He, some, he says some in the Ethereum community have termed Cardano a ghost chain, claiming that it has shut up despite its lack of projects building on its blockchain. And really, in reality, it's true. I mean, there's really not much people building onto it because it really couldn't because they didn't have smart contracts. That's the whole thing with the Gogan era. That's the whole thing with the Mary Hard Fork. So sure, I can understand that. But he said there's been a huge amount of intellectual, intellectual dishonesty, especially coming from the Ethereum maxis or other actors in the space about the nature of dApps on Cardano. Yeah, so that's a, that's a thing. Cardano is still in its infancy and currently it's in its transition phase. The phase starts with metadata, then tokens, lastly, smart contracts. The, ne the network is being judged by the same level as Ethereum, which has had smart contracts for years. And um, it's true. I mean, Ethereum had a big uh, jump on, on everything and 
we'll see how it all works out. But again, as Ethereum grew all the way to this, this massive juggernaut, um, the problem is with scaling and how much data per block. So that's the whole thing with Cardano. Now let's see if it all works out. Let's see if uh, you know people start to build on it. This is where the rubber meets the road. And I can't say e either way. And people always say, well, there's so many people building on Ethereum. Well, yeah, because that's the option right now. If you got the only game in town, that is just one thing. Now there's another game coming in. We'll see what happens. I, I just sit back and go, hey, whoever wins, whatever. I, I got investments in both. And let's see. Oh, he says, uh, despite the fact that we don't have full programming ability at the base layer, there's already applications like shoe authentication on New Balance and Cadillac authentication with Beef Chain. And so that's just one little thing. And it's not a big deal. But what they do is uh, it says here, it's kind of like they put like this real chain card to make sure that you're getting like real New Balances, which it's a New Balance shoe, whatever. I mean, not that they're not great shoes, but uh, come on. Okay. Anyhow. He says $100 transaction fees, yield farming, useless DeFi, NFT selling for millions that are pointless and useless. There's no real substance that's sustainable or viable in the long term. I have to disagree here on the, on the NFTs thing. Uh, when Gronkowski uh, for, well, now he plays with the Buccaneers, but uh, you know he minted his own cards and he just totally bypassed tops and all those different uh, card manufacturers and said, you know what? I'm just going to have uh, you guys do it. I'm, I'm going to make my own NFTs. Uh, I'll just cut the middleman out and keep, keep all the profits. So, you know, what are you gonna, that sounds pretty good. Um, that kind of aces out some the middleman, but uh, that's just how it is. So on NFTs, I can kind of see that the whole space. I do see there's kind of some ridiculousness. Like I minted an NFT of myself going like this uh, with the Shill King t-shirt. This is going to sell for 250 USDC. That's kind of ridiculous. But hey, who am I to say what people think art is, right? And then uh, to finish up, he says, Ethereum is like BlackBerry in MySpace. He says, you don't believe me? Do something for me. Take out your BlackBerry phone, go to Yahoo in your Netscape browser and search for your MySpace profile. <laughs> Tell me how that's working for you. This is how quickly things can change. And in crypto land, it moves fast. He states this, no one woke up in the 2000s and said, hey, I got to build on Windows because I like Bill Gates and Microsoft. They did it because that was a network effect and where everybody was at. So. That is what's going on. So before everybody gets all ticked off, whatever else, I mean, it's just, it's just words. Whatever you think doesn't mean uh, that that is what is actually going to happen. Whatever you think, whatever Charles thinks is not the end all be all. I mean, Ethereum could very well rise up and be fantastic, but Cardano is doing some pretty good things. And, um, you know, that's just, I see it as a, as a pretty great uh, competitor, kind of like we've had uh, Microsoft Windows. And then we have, well, we had Mac. Uh, we had Steve Jobs versus Bill Gates. Uh, and then we've now we're having uh, kind of like, um, uh, we got a, a lot of different places that are just competing with each other. Well, one of the things would be like, like SpaceX and uh, uh, Elon Musk, and he's competing against uh, Jeff Bezos' rocket company because they're just two crazy billionaires who want to go at each other. And this is the same type of thing. And uh, is anybody going to win? Uh, again, I don't know if it's really a bunch of a win. I think it's just that uh, they'll both be successful, but who knows which one will be. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comments section. Don't get too maxed out or maximalist out. Uh, I don't need that. I don't think anybody really needs that. Just be a little supportive and <laughs> see where it goes. Man, that was a funny article. All right, so that's what's going on there. And then real quick, I just want to talk about the DNews Cardano staking pool. Um, from the Cardano Foundation, we'd actually... We wanted to be ahead of the curve because in the very beginning, it was about 200 something million that you could delegate to a stake pool, which was a lot. Then they said, you know what? We're gonna cut that to 63 million. And then the whole idea was they thought it was going to go from 63 to uh, 32 million. So instead of us becoming saturated and then missing out on rewards, which I didn't want people who were staking to the staking pool to have, it, have that effect, we just cut it into two pools and we said, look, if you're going to stake to ours, because right now we don't want people to go above, we didn't want people to go above the uh, uh, 32 million uh, staking. So uh, this is what we have in DNews 1, we have 30 million. And then in, uh, let me go back, in DNews 2, we had a pretty good amount actually. I think it was like 25 or 26 million, 27 million. And we thought that was great. And then we could just cap it all off. But just so you know, um, they came out and said, we're not going to cap it at 32 million. We're going to leave it at 63 million. So you can, uh, you can delegate uh, all the way up to 63 million and not lose rewards. So go ahead and have at it. I will update the video that appears right here and that's it. But there was a thing that came up 
And people were saying, hey, Rob, when we go to delegate for Daedalus or Yolroy, either it doesn't come up or it's, it just keeps searching. And the reason why uh, is because we had to update um, part of our information as far as what the DNU stake pool is all about. And um, one of those things that we talked about, we talked about this in Saturday's video, the last video I did before I took a nice big fat break, which was nice, uh, was this. Um, on both of the of the uh, pools, we say that proceeds given every epic to help the global unbanked through kiva.org. And we talked about that in detail, how we're giving these micro loans to people across the world. And it's going to be 100 ADA for every epic. And every epic is every five days. Because again, I always feel like, look, I mean, I don't need to buy another indoor pool for my house. I don't need to buy another sweet 2018 Dodge Caravan, which is what I drive right now. So nice. It's the it's the beautiful marrying of uh, gas efficiency and uh, fantastic legroom. <laughs> I don't need any more stuff. I just don't. So I figure like I'd probably just be best served just to help more people around the world. And that's why we did that. So when we update this, we have to do this in Daedalus, Yoroi, and uh, the Ada Light, also on the uh, different websites. So the team did that. And then sometimes there would be like a little bit of a, of a time gap between one and update. So if you are missing the D News stake pool, just give it a little bit of time, maybe another 24 hours and it'll be there. It should be there right now, but uh, just so you know. So that's what's going on. Anyhow, let me just think in the comments section. And uh, oh, lastly, if you're just looking to stake uh, in the description below, the very first one is uh, the D News staking pool. There's a video. If you just scroll down, you're, you're going to go to this website, which is Dan Teaches Crypto, the one up there. The one's 100% free. Um, and it's, it's going to show you a video. It's about 18, 20 minutes now. And it just explains exactly how to stake to it. The rewards are around 5 point something percent now per year. And it just kind of lays out exactly how to do things. So let me just think in the comments section. And let's move on to our last and final piece. So last, I'll make this quick. Um, people aren't selling. People aren't selling because they know that Bitcoin is going to go to what I believe 150K. So this is what it says. This is from Glassnode. It states, uh, in bull markets, old coins tend to move more. This increases the relative supply of younger coins in the network. As previous Bitcoin tops, around 50% of the Bitcoin supply was younger than six months. We are currently significantly below this level of 36%. And the data shows that few long-term investors are tempted to sell their Bitcoin at current price levels, suggesting Bitcoin whales or hodling for higher prices, and the current bull trend could have much further to go. So look, this is what's going to happen. Now, financial advice, this is just my personal prediction. I've been talking about this since January 7th, 2021. I said, actually, even before that, uh, Bitcoin will go to 150,000. And then uh, there will be a little bit of a, of a uh, sell-off because people around the world uh, know about these four-year cycles. And uh, that'll happen. And then when people say, ah, oh, but you don't understand, Rob, there's all these institutions. Trust me, they'll sell, especially if uh, the stock market uh, tanks because our market is the only 24-7 liquid market out there. So where are they going to get this money? Well, guess what? All the institutions that came in, they're going to pull their money out. And that's just how it is. They're not true believers like me and you. They don't see the big picture yet. Some do. Michael Saylor does. Maybe Elon Musk. I'm not sure. But uh, that's how I see things going. And, uh, but the big question for, for me, and I think everybody else is when we see this huge dip, how long is it going to last? That's the bigger question. Is it going to be like a two year bear market? Like we saw in 2018, 2019, when it everything kind of rebounded, or is it going to be a big, big correction? And then we just turn around in a month. Don't know, but that's why I have an exit strategy. So if it lasts a little bit of time or a long amount of time, I'm okay. Again, I'm just a dollar cost average, just an investor. And then that's really it. That's really all, all we have today. Uh, so let me know what you think in the comment section. I will just say this to finish up. Um, I know everybody's the big rage is the NFTs, which is cool. I like NFTs, right? Um, I actually bought a Batman one from Vive, which is pretty, it's awesome. I like that. But this one, what do you think about this? I just want to get everybody's opinion real quick. How do you like this type of, instead of an NFT, like real art that you can actually hang on the wall acrylic wise? What do you think of that? Because we're going to be giving one of these away in about a week or so. And uh, it's by a uh, fellow who is a subscriber uh, for Digital Asset News. And he has his own shop in uh, Chicago. And he says, hey, we make art. We um, uh, 
uh, send it out to uh, not either local artists or global artists, and they make they make things for us. And uh, we want to share this with everybody. So I'm like, you know what? I would buy that. I would definitely put that in one of my investment properties. I guarantee that. So this is the one I'm going to get. But uh, we're going to be giving the same one away pretty soon. But let me know what you think about these types of artworks in the comment section. It's not as cool as an NFT. I mean, you just hang on your wall, but I like it. Anyhow, that's it for today. So look, if you made it all the way to the end, thanks so much for sticking with me. I appreciate it. So two things, three things. First of all, tell me what you think about the audio. Is it really worth it? If I have to go get another arm, I'll get one because that one snapped. Second thing is, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. That helps the channel tremendously, and I always appreciate it. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. And that is all for today. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.